Okay. I'd like you guys to watch a movie I just put on my favorites. It's called Night of the Comet. This thing is 100,000% super coded. And to my surprise, when I watched it, I watched it probably once as a child, didn't think nothing of it, other than it was a poor B-rate movie. But the other weekend, I searched this movie out and wanted to watch it for one, because I didn't have anything to watch and I don't have cable service, so it was a prime opportunity to watch a movie. But I wanted to watch a movie where I could possibly see something that could be relative to the events that I believe are going to take place concerning the second cup in New York City. Well, I figured that that movie being about a comet and, you know, basically wiping out a bunch of people on the earth would be a place where I might see some. Well, I, I saw some. And believe it or not, I, uh, I saw the fulfillment of what I've been telling you guys about cancer in this movie. And you're going to see that it's within every parameter of the way that I've described it. I mean, the girl's even wearing a purple shirt when she says it. And I'm going to do a breakdown of this movie. And I've already got it all pre-prepared. That's what all of these pages are. And it's going to come back to some information that we already covered a while ago about the 44. And you're seeing that these two fours mirrored upon themselves are making this pyramid. In this instance, more like a Mexican pyramid with those stairways that go up. Well, we already disclosed that this turns into this DNA. And if you can see this viper, this serpent, is going towards this X. Well, X marks the spot. Oh, I can't tell you how just intense this breakdown of this movie is going to be in the fulfillment of the understanding of who this 44 is as this ancient serpent king and how it's coded into this movie, you're going to see that I have been telling y'all guys exactly what's up. And I just am at a loss for words with <clears throat> how, to how to describe how, how taken back I am by all this. So... Watch the movie and then come back and listen to the breakdown. Now, this is something that you can expect to see in the movie. And I'm going to show it to you right now because I want you to remember the video I did entitled The Arrival of the Locust. All right? And in the Arrival of the Locust series, I showed you this Masonic Royal Arch. Now, we've already disclosed with these columns are truly all about the unification of the beauty and the beast. The beauty is what you see here, Jashin, and then the beast, of course, is Boaz. That's the serpent. This is all coded into the understanding of the unification of these fallen sons of God, these fallen sons of light with the daughters of men. And then Jashin, we already broke down into its deepest root form as Yah Rib. And then you know that in this particular verse in Genesis, we get a description that Eve was created from a rib of Adam. Now, all that super heavily coded in itself, but nonetheless, that's what this is all about. And this is where we get the understanding of this, these temples, or more importantly, the symbolic representation of the Temple of Solomon represents the House of Wisdom, which in reality you could just simply call that the House of Baphomet. And they call this the birthway to a new world. Well, it's their birthway to a new world order. 
all this is based upon their understanding, their belief in the sacred feminine. And these daughters of men, which were the feminine that was sacred to them achieving their goal and agenda of usurping the dominion of our world. And it's all encoded right here. Well, at the very top of this royal arch, I noticed something some time ago when I did that video series, The Arrival of the Locust, and we talked about it in the video series, July Equals Sacrifice, where I successfully predicted the sacrifice that would take place that was coded concerning the destruction of New York City, and that's where we had those Batman shootings. And then, if I'm correct, the very next July is when we had that sacrifice with that, I can't even remember his name, that one guy that went on that island and killed all of those children in, what was it, like, uh, I can't even remember, like Switzerland or something. Well, all that happened in July. Well, all of this stuff has manifested basically in accordance to the symbolisms of what I'm telling you is going to happen. But they've been lesser reflections. But the reflections are mounting to the fulfillment of the full manifestation. And the full manifestation that has been symbolically portrayed, everybody should know, the whole Batman thing is all about this destruction of New York City, which, if you should know, Gotham itself is symbolism for New York City. It is readily accepted that Gotham is New York City, just idealized for the Batman comic book series. All right, well, in this Royal Arch, we have the symbol for cancer, 69. Now, I'm going to show you how this plays out in this movie in the exact same manner that I've already described it to you here. One thing to keep your attention at this point, this character's name who is going to say that she is cancer at this exact time in the movie, cancer, believe it or not, that she is a cancer. She's wearing a purple shirt when she says it, and her name is Regina. And that is going to be code for Regine, as in genes, human genes, just like you can relate the rib as in connection to genetics. And just like we know that the sons of God mating with the daughters of man was crossbreeding or cross gening. In other words, regening. So this Regina, who is cancer, which you know now is this symbol, this six nine, I'm going to show you that even the time that she says it in the movie is going to add up symbolically to this same 6-9 and then everything else that goes along with it. The, the whole entire philosophy here of what they're trying to achieve. So just remember that this Jashin was the key for this regening of the earth, which would create the Nephilim and then out of them would spring the Elites, the elites, who are the ones who have turned into the secret societies, these ones who are trying to fulfill this agenda. All right. So uh, I, it's just hard for me to convey how, how intense this really is. It really is, guys. In this movie about, about the destruction of the world via some comet, and even notice, I want you guys to notice when you watch it, that these people are turned to dust. Think about the saying, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And then you don't get, you only get ashes from a fire. And then we know that the sacrifice is supposed to be an all-consuming consumption, okay? Which is going to be related to fire. But there's something more to it. I want you to remember a movie that Tom Cruise did entitled War of the Worlds that had some other outer space type visitors that ended up being planted in our soil for a long time that came up on these tripods like these robotic locust looking creatures. 
What did they do to all the people that got hit with their rays? They were turned to dust. There's a reoccurring theme in these coded movies, this understanding of what they're trying to cause to happen to us. They want us to turn to dust. And there's, there's a deeper meaning there. But nonetheless, just notice that when you're watching it, okay? And at this point, let's go ahead and add up this time when this character, Regina, the main character in the entire movie, wait till you see who the savior is. Oh my gosh. And how all of this relates. Oh my gosh. Um, so at exactly one hour in, in 13 minutes and 47 seconds. Now the 13 should just be jumping off the bat at you because everything that's going on, Ephraim the 13th tribe, Dan the 13th judge of Israel, it's the 13th Bakhtun, 13 levels of the pyramid, 13 arrows, 13 olive branches, 13 colonies, 13, 13, 13, 13. It's all 13s. It's all coded 13s. Okay. We know we're in 2013 right now. So it, w it makes me pay a little extra attention to the significance of this. And which brings me to mind thinking about this just real quick. Notice that when the movie starts, they're almost kind of giving an inside joke there. They say that there's some people that realize that this is just more than a coincidence. But most don't. And then they show a bunch of people partying. Well, that's going to line up exactly. And it's going to line up in the mirror. There's going to be a mirror flip there. And you're going to understand what it means when I talk about it. But that's going to line up to chapter 28 of Isaiah. And all of this is going to come through on Isaiah chapter 28. It just really is. I'm just hoping that I have the ability to explain all this to you. I really do because it's... I've been, I've been trying to get around to doing this for the last few days, and it's just so much. It's just so much, man. It just is incredible. It really is. And I don't know, some of you were wondering a while ago when I showed you this picture of Ishtar, what this symbol was in her hands, and I said I could tell you what this connected to and what this was all about. Well, it's going to get connected up in this, okay? All right, so now for for adding this up. Sorry for the color going out here. What I'm going to show you here is how I see it adding up. And I'm just going to see it in its most basic form. I'm going to take it just as we see it. These two ones, as they come down, are going to be an 11. 4 plus 7 is an 11. And then that leaves us here with the 3 in the center. I've got a train, of course, stopping me. I'm going to see if I can pause for a moment here and let it go by. I deal with that all throughout the night when I'm trying to sleep also. It's caused hundreds of videos never for you guys to be seen. Hundreds of them. I've just, when they get interrupted like that, I just, I don't do them. And the only reason why I'm gonna let this one go is because it's just preparing you to see the movie. <sighs> anyway, so we take this one, this one, we bring it down as an 11. This 4, this 7 is an 11. We bring this down as a 3. At this point, we have 11, 3, 11. Okay? Now, I'm going to times 3 times 11. We get 33. And then I'm going to times it 3 times 11 this way. And we're going to get 33. Now, that's no coincidence. That's no accident. This 33 is going to add up 
to 66. Okay? And then we can take that 66 and mirror it because it's the same thing up or down and we get 69, which is exactly what the symbol for cancer is. Exactly. And it's exactly at the exact second on the scene that this Regina admits that she's a cancer. So I hope that you don't think that that's a coincidence. And when you see all of the other connections, you won't be able to think that that's a coincidence any longer. And you should see that what I've been telling you guys is the real deal. And how I've been explaining it, how I've been seeing it, is true. I want you to see why. Now we know what this number with 33 is all about. Well, it's about with one of the most famous secret societies there is, Freemasonry. This is connected to their agenda, just as you see their symbolism here, the Royal Arch of Freemasonry, has the very same agenda as their main goal right there at the top, connected with the seven stars of the Pleiades, which are relative to the seven chakras of which they hope to achieve the final chakra, the purple chakra, their crown. And what is unique here about this Royal Arch is that cancer should not be here at the center, at the top of the Royal Arch. What we should have is the ingress into cancer from Gemini, but they have put this cancer specifically as the keystone for this moment because they're trying to say something. They're trying to say what they believe will be the fulfillment of this house of wisdom, or in other words, this house of Baphomet, the birthway to a new world. All of this is relative of birthing all kinds of things. New World Order, the Locust, a.k.a. the Danites, also the Fallen Prince into the material realm. All of this was sacred to their agenda, and how they were going to achieve it was using the sacred feminine, the sacred feminine daughters of man. And that's what we see with the symbolism of this column, Jashin, as it is united with this other column, Boaz, in other words, the serpent. So what we see is the unification of beauty and the beast, that fairy tale fable that's been paraded before your eyes ever since you were a child, that many of us have never realized what the truth of that tale was really all about. And even begin to think that in some of the more modern tales, they have figurized, imagized this beast as a lion, in which you can think about these young lions, as we saw in Ezekiel 19, that Ishtar had corrupted to do this hunting of men. So this beauty and the beast represents not only the serpent, but also represents these young lions, in other words, the fallen sons of God. So now we have Jashin, and the mystery of the Jashin column is solved when you understand that Jashin comes from a root word, Yarib. And we know that in a particular passage in Genesis, that Eve, a coded passage in Genesis, that Eve is said to be taken from a rib of Adam for her creation. And this is the representation of that rib, in other words, the daughters of man, Jashin, Yarib, beauty, and the beast. So the feminine was sacred to their goal. And this is what's going to be relative to why I've chosen to use the symbols of X as times, three times 11, rather than three plus 11 or something to that effect. Okay? It's correct at three times 11 because the symbolism for the 69 is relative to Ishtar, it's relative to the sacred feminine, it's relative to Venus, it's relative to their whole ideology. So XX being times between the 11 and the three, both ways on the mirror that both equal 33 is absolutely perfectly correct. You wanna know why? Because woman 
is XX chromosome. That's right. Man is XY. One of his ribs has been removed. And woman is now XX. And because Baphomet now represents the sacred feminine. So if Baphomet represents the sacred feminine, you should all remember Baphomet has those breasts and it's the unification also at the same time of another beauty and another beast, which is all symbolism for how they were originally and have carried out all this time to achieve their goal. Okay. This is going to come down to the number 23 that I might possibly explain a little further, but you're going to see come up in this movie perfectly coded at the end. Everything's in here. The Danites, everything that I've told you, it's all there. It's just all there. So you should see now that this is no coincidence. Okay. She says she's a cancer at this exact same time. Symbolic right off with the 13. Right off of the 13. You should know by now that 11 is the gate. 11 is the gate. Okay. And then you know this 9-11 situation being the first cup. And then we've got the the second cup coming. Okay. We've got, we've got, uh, we've almost got an impregnation induced labor period from the first cup. And then now we need the birthing moment. Okay. 11 is the gate. It's the threshold. 11 is the gate because of this connection to the fractal understanding of five and six and who five and six is. That brings us back to Genesis. That brings us back to man. That brings us back to the devil. That brings us back to the temptation. The union of the ideology of man joining with the ideology of the devil of the serpent six, which represents the higher spirit endowment on this plane at that time, the sixth sense. As I told you, the serpent wasn't the devil himself. The serpent was an emissary of the devil. The serpent represented one of these fallen sons of God. He represented one with his sixth sense intact. And this is why they see these beings as being gods. That's why they were considered gods. So it's the unification with the five and the six man working with the emissaries of the devil those that had the sixth sense those that were illuminated those that had their spirit sight in connection that represents the 11 on its most basic root form all the way to the fruit of truth this understanding that we can see that's relative to the entirety of the whole the entirety of the whole 11 is the gate for many other reasons but that's the root reason and all of it's there this 33 you're going to see the 333 come out at the end of the movie. That's right, with those people that want you to believe in this Gospel of Thomas. Well, you're going to see who believes in this Gospel of Thomas, and you're going to see that it's the same deception that I'm revealing to you that is related to the same deceptive promise of the serpent of the Garden of Eden who says, I know how to make you gods. I know how to quicken you to your path of divinity. You've got to use the knowledge of good and evil. These evil acts that are being committed, this way to achieve a greater output of energy, because destruction, whether you guys real, realize it or not, realize it or not, puts out more immediate energy in an instant than creative energy. Creative energy puts out, puts out potential energy that goes into eternity forever, but destructive energy puts out instantaneous energy that implodes in a moment. This destructive energy can have a greater result in an instance that can be harnessed. So think about it in respects like this. If I was to plant a seed, that's creative energy. That's a creative act. But it takes a long time to see that seed grow into a tree, into that mighty potential of that energy. It takes time. You got to see it go into eternity. Well, if I was to chop down that tree in an instant, that tree would immediately fall and produce a, an, a, an enormous amount of energy. If I could just harness that energy, in other words, like they think, to get that tree to fall on the house of our enemy. You get me? So they're using this 
knowledge of good and evil to achieve what they believe is a benefit for themselves. And then that's how they can warrant doing it because it's going to get them closer to their achievement of their divinity that they think that they can have because they're carrying out this doctrine of their master who is really this fallen one who has rejected the living way, the true way of Jesus Christ. So, anyway, watch the movie and I've got much, much more stuff. Wait till you see when Hank Goldman shows up as the cowboy and the exact timing that he shows up and what all of this means. Hank is an anagram for Ankh. Ankh Goldman, Serpent King. I'll be back.